Okay, let's take a look at our sagittal head model, see what kind of respiratory and digestive features we can come up with. So the brain, that's the big no-brainer, right? Remember that from AMP1? You have the nice sagittal section of the brain, and you remember off the inferior aspect, you have the pituitary gland, what we call the hypothesis cerebri, right? That sits in the cell turcica of the sphenoid bone, which then makes this big hollow opening here, the sphenoid sinus, okay? Of course, you have the frontal lobe of the brain, sitting posterior to the frontal lobe, that makes this opening here the frontal sinus. So that's not so bad. Now, we look at the nasal cavity and the oral cavity to find some features in there that we have to identify for the practical. The palate's essentially going to separate the two cavities for us. So the hard palate, if you recall, it's made of left and right maxillary bone and the left and right palatine bone. Then off the posterior aspect of the palate, you have your soft palate. And then posterior word, off of the soft palate, you have your little hangy down dangly thing called the uvula, right? And when you swallow, that uvula is going to rise. It's going to close off the nasal pharynx from the oral pharynx. So then pretty much everything you're looking at above this palate is nasal, uh, nasal cavity. So one of the first obvious things you find in nasal cavity are these three bumps. I've got one there, there, and there. Those are your nasal concha, okay? Your superior and your middle nasal concha, those are found in the ethmoid bone. Your inferior nasal conch is a bone all by itself, okay? And of course, you have a right and a left, so you would have six total. When you get posterior to the nasal conch, you have an expansion, okay? That expanded area is referred to as the internal, internal nares, okay? I don't believe that's on our lab list, but once you get back in the area of the nares or the nares, you find this opening right there. That little raised spot, that opening, is for the eustachian tube, or what we call the pharyngotympanic tube. I prefer pharyngotympanic because it tells you exactly where it's going. It's going from the pharynx or the throat to the behind posterior to the tympanic membrane. Okay? And just posterior now to the pharyngotympanic tube up here, we have what are referred to as the pharyngeal tonsils, or you'll also hear those referred to as the adenoids when they enlarge. Okay? Now, if I go inferior to the palate, we're in the area that we refer to as the oral cavity. But you see in your list, we have an oral cavity and we have an oral vestibule. And essentially, the teeth are going to be the barriers. So here I have my lower teeth, the maxillary ones up top. I'm sorry, the mandibular ones up top. I have the maxillary teeth, okay? So between my teeth and my lips, then, I have a space. And that space between the teeth and lips, that's referred to as the oral vestibule, okay? When I go posterior to the teeth, now I'm in what's referred to as the oral cavity proper. Pretty much everything your tongue can hit when you keep your mouth closed. So as I work my way back towards the posterior aspect of the tongue, I run into these pink structures here that would be my lingual tonsil, okay? And then I don't know if you can see very well on this video, but right here in the back, that little reddish brown structure, those would be then your palatine tonsils, okay? From the lymphatic system. So I have pharyngeal tonsils, palatine tonsils, and then I have my lingual tonsils. Now your throat, or your pharynx, is divided up into three different regions. The part of the pharynx that's posterior to the nasal cavity, we would refer to that as the nasopharynx, okay? The part of the pharynx that's behind the oral cavity, we would refer to that as the oropharynx. And then the part of the pharynx that's behind the voice box, or the larynx, we would call that laryngopharynx. So nasopharynx, oropharynx, laryngopharynx. The nasopharynx is air only. You don't expect to eat through your nose, although you could if you had a nasogastric tube, right? The oropharynx and the laryngopharynx, they're now common for both air and food. So if I swallow food, I would expect food to go down um, inferior word through the pharynx and then into this collapsible tube we refer to as the esophagus. If I breathe air, I can breathe air through my nose or my mouth, and then air would work its way through the larynx and down into the trachea. The trachea are going to bifurcate into the right and left primary bronchi later. The esophagus is going to work its way down and enter the cardiac region of the stomach. So what determines then which way air or food goes is this piece of elastic cartilage right here, this blue thing. That's your epiglottis, okay? The glottis is a space between your vocal cords. The epiglottis is this elastic cartilage that sits on top. So when you swallow then, what happens is the larynx will rise, the epiglottis will come down slightly, and what you'll do is wall off that trachea. So when you swallow, food can go posteriorward into the esophagus. When you're breathing, that esophagus collapses, the epiglottis stays relaxed, and air can go from the nose or the mouth down into the trachea.
So once I'm in this voice box or the laryngeal area, I have this raised bump here, the more medial and inferior bump. That's my vocal cord or my true cord. And then superior and slightly lateral to that, I have my false or my vestibular cord, or more often you'll see it referred to as the vestibular fold. Okay. Then my big cartilage in the front, you're looking here on a, on a sagittal section, that's my thyroid cartilage. And then the larger cartilage that you see to the posterior aspect, that's your cricoid cartilage. So a quick overview then of all of the respiratory and digestive things that we can see on the sagittal head, at least from this view, and my frontal sinus, and my sphenoid sinus, my superior, my middle, my inferior nasal conch. I have my pharyngotympanic tube. I have my pharyngeal tonsils, I have my hard palate, my soft palate, my uvula, okay, and my nasal pharynx, I've got my oropharynx, and I've got my laryngopharynx. My oral cavity is that space that's found inferior to the, to the palate. My oral vestibule is that cavity that's found between the lips and the teeth, okay. Of course, I have my tongue, posterior to the tongue, I have my lingual tonsil, wedged back there in an area called the fauces between the palatoglossal and palatopharyngeal arches, which we'll find later, we find our palatine tonsils. And this blue structure, that is my elastic cartilage-based epiglottis. I have my esophagus, my trachea, I have my vocal cord, my true cord, and I have my vestibular fold, and my thyroid cartilage, and my cricoid cartilage. And that's a pretty decent overview of the structures we have on the medial aspect of the sagittal head.